Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's Asa Abloy Academy webinar on Seco Hollow Metal Door Solutions. I would like to remind you that within 24 hours of this, you will receive an email. If you don't, then check your junk email folder. It will be a thank you for attending and something that you can use for proving that you attended for continuing education credit if you need to. And this session is being recorded as well. And within 24 hours, it will be on the Asa Abloy Academy website. Click on the virtual instructor led training. And then on the top right hand corner, there will be links to all of the recorded sessions in case you want to review anything. We are not able to send the presentation out, but you can review the recording anytime that you need to. And it is my pleasure to introduce the instructor today, Rose Cliff Olson. She's our door group training manager and quote specialist. And at the end, she'll save time for some q and I'll be in the background answering questions during the presentation. I'll type answers. And if there's any that we need to save for the end, we will uh, open it live and ask Rose. So Rose, Great. the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Katie, and thank you all for attending the session today. Uh, we're going to start off with um, just giving you a little bit of information about the service center, uh, service centers that we have around the country, uh, the different types of capabilities that they have. Each one of these, as you look at the map, um, lo the different locations, uh, some have um, different capabilities, their inventory is different. You can actually go onto the service center website and look at each service center and look at what they classify as um, their stock inventory. But we have a variety of these across the country for your use. With SECO also, if you haven't had the opportunity, uh, please take a few minutes um, and go to the SECO website. A lot of good information there. Uh, we have the built app that is uh, there that you can uh, take a look at that. It's downloadable to your iPad or your um, phone. And this is a uh, installation app that is not a Asa Abloy, but it is used by various manufacturers to be able to show you a step-by-step -step on how to install uh, their product or how to uh, uh, um, attach or build their products. With that, uh, we, we get this to our products, our SQL doors and frames, and then we also have hardware on there. So this app will actually give you um, a step-by-step. -step. It will lay out all of your tools that are needed um, and it walks you through and we have this in English and in Spanish. So um, be aware of that app. Also, we have the Dave's opening blog. A lot of good information listed there. If you uh, subscribe, you will get notification each time we post a new article. Uh, you can do a search on there um, by, um, information you're looking for. So if you wanted to know something about Thermal Bow, you could type that in. And any articles that we posted in relation to that will pop up. So take advantage of that. A lot of good technical information. And it's not overwhelming. Uh, there's just, you know, a few um, paragraphs to it, but we do a deep dive in different topics. Or if you actually wanted us to do a deep dive on a topic, you are more than willing um, able to send in your topic and we will take a look at it. The other is your our Asa Ablo Academies and as Katie was talking about with all the various types of classes listed there, you can get to that through the SECO website. With that said, we'll start with uh, SECO frames and here's just a little bit of an overview of the various types of frames and the options that are available from 12 gauge all the way down to 18 gauge in the frames, the masonry frame, drywall frame, 14 down to 18 gauge, and the different types of steel, whether it's cold rolled, A60, which is your galvan, uh, galvanized, and the G90 is your galvanized material. We have, have those available. Uh, with Seco, they start from a three inch and in their price book, you can price and you will see availability of jam depths all the way to 17 and seven eighths. We go eighth inch increments on all of the jam depths. Again, there's variable face sizes that are available, your different types of rabbits, um, if it's other than standard, um, send that information in and we can take a look at that. 
Uh, we have various types of way the frames are attached, whether it's KD or, or um, fully welded, face welded, the various types of fire ratings that are available, whether it's UL or, or um, ITS Warnock. And again, the various types of anchors that are available in our tech data. We have um, pages of all the different types of anchors that are available, whether they're loose or welded in. And of course, SQL provides factory pre-finished material. Here is just some additional information about the different types of frames that are available that we've kind of run through. Um, we'll, we will be getting into the uh, double egress, your thermal break, your curved and let line types of products. With that, we start off with the um, standard frame, which is called the S frame. That is going to be your masonry frame. Uh, with this product, we have it in unequal or equal rabbited frames. The unequal is, is going to be your standard. Uh, the unequal, you have the majority of material in our service centers. There are, are, are unequal rabbited material. Uh, there are some equal rabbit material that is listed uh, that you'll see inventory at the service center, but again, it's, it's, it's confined to uh, one or two different jam depths and the quantities aren't, um, there's not a large quantity of the equal rabbit material on the shelves at the service centers. With your SU or unequal rabbit at frame, you're going to have, of course, your rabbit's going to be um, one and 15 sixteenths for your inch and three quarter thick door, one and nine sixteenths for your inch and three eighths door. At the chart at the, at the bottom there, it just gives you the different, uh, some of our standard jam depths from four and three quarter to eight and three quarter, and then your various dimensions on that frame. Uh, with the SU or unequal rabbit at frame, we do go from 16 to 14 gauge. 12 gauge is optional, um, that is available, but that is not something that's a gauge that's inventory at any of the service center. It is a custom gauge. So when that's being ordered, it will have a longer lead time from the factory. Some other nomenclature for, our, um, for the masonry type frames are your SQ, which is going to be your equal rabbit frame. Your SC is your cased opening. Sometimes you hear it referred to as a trimmed opening. You're going from room to room and you don't need a door hanging in that opening. You just wanna trim out the opening. So you'll hear uh, it, uh, the terminology of uh, trimmed opening. And the SR, which is your single rabbit frame. The one thing you wanna be, uh, be aware of single rabbit frames, when you get below four and three quarter, I believe it is jam depth, uh, because of the tooling that we have um, at the factory, we cannot form that frame up to have two rabbits on it. So be aware of that. The other place, other reason you'll see a single rabbit architects uh, will specify this. They like the look of it uh, with the one rabbit on it gives it a little bit sleeker look to that frame. The SE is the double egress um, frame. And again, you'll see this type of frame in your um, corridor, long corridors. Uh, it also helps with the flow of traffic. You will see this frame um, fire rating uh, up to three hours on it. Um, surface vertical rods, concealed vertical rods on this. And for the most part, this uh, double egress opening is uh, the doors that suffer in the hold open position. Here is a quick look at some of the more standard um, anchors that SQL provides. In the tech data, in their price book, they also have a, a lot more um, different types of anchors. Also, another resource for you is the SECO order writing manual, uh, which has pages and pages of all the different types of anchors, whether they're welded in or whether they're loose. Uh, but this screen here is just showing you some of the more standard ones. The one uh, detail to the top right there is the standard uh, floor anchor or base anchor may be referred to. That comes standard with all of your masonry frames. Uh, the only way you will not receive a base anchor or floor anchor on your masonry frames is that you specify that on an order that you do not want those. So again, these are just some of the more common anchors that SQL provides. Then we get into the DU or our drywall frame. These are your true drywall KD frames. These are uh, application of interior uh, uh, frame interior application, no welding. Uh, this frame is not designed to be welded. Um, with that, you'll see this type of frame used in office settings, um, apartments, um, 
interior, anywhere within a building on the inside, depending on size, like like commercial duty or, or standard duty commercial type of work, you'll see this DU frame. And again, like the SU, we have DU for unequal rabbited, and we also have DQ for the equal rabbited frame. And please note with the DU frame, hour and a half rating max. Um, also um, with this, you'll see the, uh, the gauges. We do not offer a drywall frame in a 12 gauge material. So there are some restrictions when you come to the DU and the DQ frame. One thing I didn't talk about is the applied or embossed labels. Um, we do have those which are embossed. Uh, that is a no charge to you, but that is embossed and pressed into the bare metal. Uh, the great the upside to this is that that embossment is a no charge. The downside is because it is pressed into that bare metal, then we put a couple coats of primer on, it gets to the field, they put a couple coats of paint on it. It may become the way you can't see that embossment. So be aware of that. Always look at your specs to make sure if they're ask, asking for an applied, which is an actual metal label on that frame, or if the embossment would suffice. With the drywall frame, some of the other terminology we have is DQ. As I said, the equal rabbit at the DC, which is your cased opening or trimmed opening frame, and the DR, which is going to be your single rabbit at frame. And again, take note of the various jam depths that are available because they are going to be different based um, from your masonry type frame. This session, uh, um, different series of frames rather, is what we call the before drywall. Uh, you look at the details and it actually looks like a drywall frame, except that the anchoring system is totally different. This is actually a masonry frame um, and the, we have the back bends that are on this frame. Architects will draw this type of frame up when you're looking at an application, they're setting that frame um, and then they want to bring that drywall in behind the frame. Uh, so with that back bend on it, it allows that that drywall slides up into the frame without gouging out that drywall. Again, this is a type of product that is not inventoried at the service center. It is a longer lead time on it because it is a, a custom product, but it is available for you. As you see, the details of the profiles there for the BQ. The BU is in your um, unequal rabbited, uh, your BC uh, for your case opening, and then your BR would be for your single rabbit. And again, with this, and I just saw a typo error for the single rabbit, it should say 16 and 14 gauge, not six gauge. Um, but again, with the before drywall types of products, uh, we do have some limitations on uh, your um, gauges and, and also on your jam depths. Some of the custom frames, when we think about custom frames and we look at 12 gauge, 14 gauge, um, but we have them throughout all the different gauges. And again, the type of steel that is available, uh, the ratings, we can go up to three hour. Again, that's going to depend on the configuration of that custom frame. But that includes your bar lights, transom frames, side lights, uh, transom side lights, arched or curved uh, frames, and the design you see to your right. The one thing I wanted to bring to your attention is the bituminous back coating or back coating that you'll see the uh, picture at the bottom of the screen there. Probably eight, nine, 10 years ago, um, we came out with a water-based type of um, back coating. Previous to that, manufacturers, distributors would always, if that was in a spec, if that was something that I was um, uh, voided out or said that you had to, they would not supply it. It had to be done in the field because that back coating was so toxic that the manufacturer nor the distributor wanted to um, deal with that. So, you know, again, we came out as an industry with a water-based, environmentally friendly type of back coating. So this is another um, option you can offer your customer when you know, in fact, that they're gonna be grouting that frame. This is going to help protect from the inside out of that frame to slow the rust process down. So it's, it's a coating that helps in that, in that process. So again, we can do this in um, both KD and welded frames. It is all for also, and as you see there in factory pre-finished colors, uh, it is approved with our labeling agencies, and it also can be done with side lights, bar lights. Uh, you as a distributor can do it in your shop also. Um, just um, purchase the material, the compound, and do it uh, in your, fact, in your uh, shop. 
Here is showing you some of the more custom profiles and backbends that are out there. This by no means is everything that Seco can do, but it just kind of gives you a little bit of flavor for the different types of uh, profiles that they can do, the various types of backbends. Again, if you have a detail that's a little, what I call weird and wonderful, send it in, let us take a look at it. Let's make sure that um, this is a um, type of product that we can in fact uh, manufacture for you. In just a few minutes, I wanna spend on this fire resistive type of product, which you may hear it called, or you may be aware of this as the E119. This is a product that's fire resistive. It is part of, or is considered as part of the wall. The only thing I would um, stress to you that if you're looking at a spec and any of the um, test standards that you see at the bottom of the screen there, whether it's ASTM E119, UL263 or NFPA251, Please get in touch with your um, local DSS or your regional business development person because this is a product where um, more and more architects are um, uh, enforcing that this is a product they want. It is quite a bit more expensive than your standard fire protection type of frames that we're accustomed to. The biggest thing is 25% of that common wall is fire rated. It's going to need to be this type of fire resistive framing. Again, the beauty with this is you can, it can mimic like a wall of glass. Um, with Seco, they also have a level three bullet resistant properties and an STC um, rating with this um, product. You'll see here some of the common applications for this E119 uh, fire resistive type of products. Um, your hospitality, healthcare, entertainment, and a lot of different public use facilities. And because this is so customized, um, we don't want you to take on the responsibility of trying to price this up or do submittals. Um, send in this form is on our website. You can download this and fill this out, send it in to us. We will do the pricing. Um, also, we will do the um, submittal packages for you. Uh, nothing will be um, ordered or manufactured until we get an approved uh, shop drawing back. So that is a, um, a high level overview of uh, the Seco frames, um, the series that we have. And what we'll go through now is the various types of doors uh, that uh, Seco has their series and their applications. So you'll see to the left, we have what we call our composite series of doors. And then we have our standard still stiffened products. And we'll walk through each one of these series. The first one is your Regent door, which is a handed honeycomb core door. The Omega is going to be your non-handed honeycomb core door. You'll see there with the Seco door, we have uh, tabs and slots. So as you look at that top picture, you have the, the pan of the door with the slots. And then the, the other part of the door is what we call the lid. And it has the, the tabs in it and it slides together. For it to be non-handed, the edges of the doors are going to be square. And the way we accomplish the handing is you'll see the picture at the bottom. We have a handing plate um, that comes with all of our doors and you can flip the door and, uh, I'm sorry, flip the handing plate and we'll accommodate to make it a right or a left-handed in the field. And again, this is gonna be more of your standard type of hardware. Of course, we know there's some hardware out there where you have to have the handing, um, but in more of your standard types, you can use the non-handed reversible type of door. Again, you'll notice the various gauges that are available in the honeycomb core. Uh, you'll also see the benefits of this honeycomb core and also the applications um, that uh, we have listed for the honeycomb core. As we walk through these doors, you'll notice not all of the different types of door cores are available in all of the sizes. For instance, the honeycomb core is available up to nine foot, where we've got other doors that are available in 10 foot and in five foot in width. The next type of door we have is the honey uh, polystyrene core door which in the Legion is your handed, the Ultra is your non-handed. You'll notice the gauges that are available with the polystyrene insulated door. The great thing with this, it is insulated. Uh, you don't have to worry about where it's being used because you've got it for is interior or exterior application. You have an insulated door. And note with this type of door, we do go up to 10 foot tall. Here again, your benefits. Again, as I said, it's insulated core resistant to impact and then your applications for the polystyrene type of door. 
The other type of insulated door that we have is the polyurethane core. This is going to be uh, as a handed door, imperial, uh, non-handed versa door. This again is an insulated door, but it, if you're looking for an application where you need the highest insulated type of door that is available, is going to be the polyurethane core door. With Seco's polyurethane core door, um, it is a foamed in type of core that they use. You'll notice the sizes. This goes up to nine foot. Um, pretty much all of the doors will, as you see, has, availability, has the ability to be fire rated up to three hour. Some depending on the size, um, you want to be aware of that a hardware that may differ. Um, the benefits for the polyurethane core door, again, energy efficient, as you'll see there in insulating characteristics as I was talking about. And then the applications that you will see most common for the polyurethane door. The Fuego door is a temperature rise door, the 250 temp rise. Seco has two different types of temperature rise door, and we'll talk about both of those. But the first here is the 250. It is a one piece drop in core. It's what we call our solid mineral fiberboard core. You can get this door um, up to nine foot tall. Again, fire rating up to three hours. You're going to see this door, of course, in your stairwell application. Basically, on the 250 temp rise, uh, the testing that we had to pass was 30 minutes, the first 30 minutes of fire exposure to say one side of the door, the other side of the door would not exceed 250 degrees. That is that first 30 minutes of fire exposure. Um, that first 30 minutes in any building that's on fire is most critical to get people out, down the stairwells, and out to safety. Again, the benefits for this type of, of door you will see um, is for your stairwells, which is most popular, um, that you'll see this uh, type of door. And again, the other thing is your chemical storage area. You see um, a lot of times a temperature rise door that is specified in chemical storage areas. The medallion door is Seco Still Stiffen door. Um, the standard um, um, way that they make this door is they have 22 gauge metal stiffeners that are welded to the inside face of the door. They're placed six inches apart, and in between the voids, they pack it full of insulation, as you see the detailed picture there. The stiffener is standard at 22 gauge, but SECO also offers those stiffeners to become, you can get those in 20 gauge, 18, or 16 gauge. As you increase the thickness of your stiffeners, please remember that you need to increase the thickness of your face skins. Um, as we're welding, and remember, we're, we're welding that metal to metal, um, you want to make sure that the space sheets of that door are going to be thick enough if you increase the stiffeners. With the still stiffened door, it is a handed door. You'll see that it's offered all the way to 12 gauge and up to 10 foot tall. Um, also fire rating up to three hour. Again, the medallion door is going to be in anywhere where it's going to be a lot of abuse, a lot of usage, high, um, severe traffic. Um, you will see a medallion door specified. And again, here are some of the applications for the medallion door. The next type of door, um, remember I had talked about the 250 temp rise is a one piece core. Now, if you need, if you are looking at the spec and they're calling for a 450, that will be the medallion 450 temp rise door. With that, it is a still stiffened door. So because you've got well, uh, stiffeners welded to the face sheet, you're going to see spot wall marks at some point on this door like you do on the regular medallion door. That's just the nature of this door. Um, throughout you know, the years, manufacturers have gotten better at manufacturing these still stiffened doors, but because you are mel welding metal to metal, um, we don't um, um, recommend high gloss finish paint on this. Any place where you're looking for aesthetics and not durability, this is not the type of door that you want in that opening. It's for your strength and durability is, is what you're looking at. So the 450, if it's a temperaturized door, will be a still stiffened door. So keep that in mind. The other type of door that we have <clears throat> is our BH. This is our patient room access door. With this product, it is designed that if you have um, a psychiatric facility or a de-escalation room or a holding area, um, somewhere where you have someone in a room and they could 
um, take and barricade themselves in that room. The, the design of this door is that the smaller door, the wicket door is opens from the corridor, opens to the corridor side and that caretaker or whoever can step through the door without the, the door being open to access that room. So again, it's a safety type of door. You'll see it has continuous hinge. So we have what we call the wave lock on this uh, door. But again, patient room access and you have the security, but you also have the, the ability to get into that room if somebody barricades themselves in. And again, you'll see the benefits and the applications for the BH patient room access door. The still stiffen trio door. We have a trio and a trio E door, and we'll go through both how they're uh, different. But the trio is a laminated still stiffen door. And with this trio door, is it's the biggest difference from a still stiffen door is that those stiffeners are welded to a subsheet. And then that stiffener and that subsheet is placed inside the door. And then we pack the voids full of insulation. So with this type of door, and as far as I still know, ASA is the only one in, in the industry that makes this type of door. But the beauty of this is that you have the, the durability and the strength of a still stiffened product, but, then now, but now you have a door that you don't have to worry about what type of paint is on the door because there's no spot wall marks on the face of the door. With this, the stiffeners again are um, 22 gauge stiffeners, you'll see the various sizes that are available. And again, the benefit of it is that it's a, it's a strong door uh, with no vertical spot wall marks on the face of the door and applications are listed. The still stiffened door, that's the maximum and it's an inch and three quarter thick door and the restrict door is a two inch thick door. These are the security types of doors. Um, with these products, the inch and three quarter um, security door, the stiffeners are uh, six inches apart. Um, with your two inch thick door, the way they do that, the way, that, the way it's manufactured is the stiffeners are placed four inches apart. So the wider the door, the more stiffeners you're going to have in that. You'll see the gauges are available. So you're, you're very limited on the gauge available. So on the inch and three quarter thick, 14 gauge. On your two inch door, two inch thick door, they do offer 14 and 12 gauge. Um, no 18 gauge, no 16 gauge on these types of doors. Again, the different types of steel is the cold roll A60 and G90. Please note the different maximum sizes depending on the thickness of the door. The one thing also, um, as we look through these various doors, you'll see we have the STC or sound transmission classification for these doors. All of that, those inform that information as far as each door itself as with an STC rating, that is the door. As you build with um, sounds, with the seals and the threshold and everything else, you can increase your STC. But the STC that we're showing here is just the door itself. And again, your benefits of these types of security doors and the applications you will see them in. Our style or rail door uh, is called the through light. This is a tubular style or rail door. Um, this is the type of product that you will see on entry openings. A lot of times you'll see it with a narrow style or rail where they mimic, they want to mimic an aluminum opening but they need the strength and durability of it being metal and being galvanized. So this is a product that is available. This um, product is, is made completely different than a standard metal door and you'll see the detail there. Uh, it looks basically like a tube and that's where it comes with the tubular uh, style or rail type of construction with this. Again, with this, you do have some ratings, but it's very limited. Um, and we have the various um, uh, sizes for your top, and bottom rails, styles and rails. Again, the benefits of this being a tubular style of construction, um, but again, has the durability of being metal. And then your applications that you will see, uh, this product spec. 
Um, just very briefly, I wanted to tell you that um, about hurricane and tornado types of products that CEQA offers. And again, these are products that are available um, on the website. They have a lot more information, but you'll see a lot of different of the features and um, benefit or options there with the sizes, you know, all the way up to pairs, 8080, the various types of cores that are available in the hurricane types of products, glazing options are available, um, along with site light transom um, types of options. So again, this is more information can be found on the website. And with Tornado um, coming in with the um, different types of options listed there and the sizes, and again, available in in-swing or out-swing design, single or paired opening. And again, additional information is on the website. Um, CECO has a, um, both for the tornado or the um, hurricane, there's a lot of information on the website. And again, these products are tested with certain sizes, hardware and different things like that. So you can go in there and kind of see the metrics uh, that we have for these types of products. Sustainable solutions, um, again, with the sustainable solutions, we always wanna make sure that the doors, uh, the openings can accommodate, you know, indoor air quality uh, for the Green Guard goal. We wanna make sure that our products aren't um, emitting some sort of chemical or odor or gas or anything like that. Daylighting, I uh, wanna be aware that we wanna be able to have doors and frames that have some sort of glazing that can have glass in them. Again, if you work in an environment where you get a lot of natural light, um, study shows you feel better, um, you work better with that natural light coming in. And again, the transparency, we wanna be as transparent as possible. I'll show you the EPD um, that we, on a, I'm sorry, declare it label that kind of goes through and it shows you a laundry list or an ingredients list like you would see on a loaf of bread, what it takes to make up, to make up that door. And then energy efficient. We want to make sure that our products, and we have different products for that. We're going to talk about the tree OE here in just a few minutes, but also we have a mercury opening with the door and the frame, which no one else in industry has but us. And then we also have a curved frame as an option. So within a sustainable solution, I really like the SECO website when you get into, if you go to the tab on their homepage on the sustainable uh, the sustainable tab rather, you'll see a lot of information, um, whether that's giving you a definition as it says here about your U and your uh, U factor, your R value. Um, again, I always say you don't need to know everything off the top of your head. You just need to know who to contact or where to find the information. So a lot of information about sustainability is, is on the website that you can access. The one thing I do like about this chart that I put on here is that at a glance, you can look at this and depending on what type of door, what type of frame is needed, you can get to where your U factor or your R value is depending on your door and your frame. So as you look at your door series cores, it tells you the tree OE, which we're gonna talk about in a minute, the mercury door or your imperial door, your legion door, and then you go across the chart and it will tell you what, um, as far as your U factor and your R value, depending on the type of frame that you have. So again, at a glance, good information for you. If you're looking at a spec and you're not really sure, this is um, a great uh, resource for you. The other thing I wanna point out to you is uh, the ASTM C1363, Operable Assembly. Um, in specifications, sometimes they will, they, will, they will call out for this and then there's also another ASTM document that is for um, fixed. Um, with Operable, when that testing, is done, that opening has to operate with whatever hardware, whatever, and whatever testing you're going for. The other ASTM document um, or uh, standard that you may see out there is just for fix. So basically what um, manufacturers do is take a chunk from a door or whatever a piece of something for its frame or door, and they test it and they calculate basically, or I guess it's what it's called, calculated. Um, and they calculate what that maybe that U factor should be or the R value or the AS um, or the STC. So be aware of that because not all manufacturers, our competition can offer you operable. Um, some of their products are um, uh, calculated, which means it doesn't, they haven't tested it that that opening can operate on its own. So here with, uh, we were talking about the declared label. You'll see here, it talks about the Legion door ultra drawer, excuse me, um, final assembly, and then it goes and gives you the ingredients. 
of this door. So again, all of these types of sustainable solutions we try to um, uh, go through with our doors and frames. The TRIO E door. And so E, if you think about it, is going to be energy efficient. So as you look at that detail there, the, the, the uh, detail in the circle there, basically is showing you those stiffeners. Again, just like the TRIO door, we take these stiffeners, we weld it to a subsheet, we put it inside the door, but we cut the stiffeners back just a bit, and then we pump it full of um, liquid polyurethane. So then you've got this liquid urethane that's going through this, this door and, and allowing it to be a very um, energy efficient type of product. So again, with that, these are stiffeners, but you don't need to worry about, you know, spot wall marks coming through the face of the door. And because we pump it full of liquid urethane, you get the energy efficiency of this product. If you were just looking for a still stiffened door with no spot wall marks, go to the trio door is what you want to look at. And again, you'll look at the operable um, um, ASTM um, factors on this. You'll see the sizes. And again, remember not everything can be made in 10 foot tall, but also up to three hour. Your benefits are listed here um, again, and then your application. Again, the strength of the still stiffen, but again, you don't have to worry about any spot wall marks and it becomes a um, very good um, energy efficient type of door. And then we have another type of energy efficient opening, which is called the Mercury system. And this is a door and a frame. And you might think, well, okay, you've got the trio E, why do we need another type of energy efficient product? Well, if you were on looking, um, looking at a project and they come back to you and wanting to say, hey, I, I can't, you know, we don't have in our budget for the trio E, do you have another option? You um, do have another option with SQL, you have the Mercury system. And it's about 10, 15% less expensive than the trio. And it gives you another option. So you just, you know, you're not just offering in one product and, and then if you, you know, you're out the door with that. So with the Mercury system, on the door, we have a patent pending on this. And basically, if you look at, and I'm gonna see if in fact I have, I don't think I have a detail of the Mercury door, but if you look on, our, on the website, the Mercury door has um, diamond shaped rods that are welded to the top and the bottom of the door, and then we pump it full of liquid polyurethane. So you get an energy efficient product. Some people call it a still stiffened door, but technically it's not still stiffened because we're not welding any stiffeners to the inside face of that door. But again, you have the energy efficiency at a lower price than your Trio E door. So again, with ASA, you have, a, you have more options. We have the Mercury versus the um, old style and the Mercury frame. This is what is used with the Mercury system. Yeah, it has passed all of the ASTM um, standards. It's gone through the cycle testing for the ANSI. You'll see there 8250.4 for the uh, physical endurance. So it meets all of those standards. It is uh, less expensive. It's easier to make, less expensive, has a nicer, sleeker look to it. Um, it is a two-piece frame because with it being a thermal break type of frame, it must be because you've got to have a break in that frame to help with the cold and condensation going through the frame. Um, but just as an FYI, we still have the old style uh, still available. Um, but with that old style, the lead time is excessive. So um, please be aware that if you're looking for a thermal break type frame, please um, talk about the mercury frame. Another type of option um, in an energy efficient um, type of application is a curve frame. Again, with the curve frame, we make this frame with an indentation and a stop, as you see there on the side, and then you can slide in the weather strip. The beauty of this is that if it gets damaged, you can just slide it out, reorder it, slide it back in, versus having, on, having like a stick-on type of weather strip. Decorative different types of solutions we have. Um, these are more of my favorite types of doors. You have the high um, def embossed doors. So when you get into you know, high-end condos, uh, really nice office um, facilities and things like that, you'll see a lot of times they want an embossed door, but they want a really nice look to it. So we have these in these six or eight panel, one and two um, panels, 18 and 16 gauge. Again, you'll see that it can be fire rated up to three hour and it has an STC rating up to 48 on these doors. So again, the benefits of it being an energy efficient 
um, with an emboss would be cost effective also to a style and rail type of door, wood door rather. Um, as I talked about condos, assisted living, uh, hotels, office buildings, so forth, you'll see these high def embossed doors. I think my favorite door is the Madeira door. This is the wood grain type of door. So if you have a customer that's looking for a look of a wood door, but they need it to be say three hour fire rated, it's going to be an exterior application, um, especially on the three hour wood doors cannot, they don't have a three hour rating. Uh, exterior application, you want something to withstand the uh, weather. The Madeira door is the type of product you wanna look for. The steel comes into Seco um, already, I'm sorry, the steel comes in already etched and you'll see the etchings go the correct direction. So it mimics a um, style and rail wood door. We have six standard colors. Uh, we take and we then put a clear UV top coat on the door. Uh, again, this can be fire rated up to three hours. Now, along with the six standard colors, uh, Seco can match pretty much any color. I think to date they've done almost 3,000 different types of pre, uh, special colors. Uh, we can also take the frame and um, pre-finish that. It won't be etched, but it will. It can match the door. So again, this is a, a beautiful type of door. And because you have the strength of it being steel, but it still has the look of wood, is a great um, option for your customer. And again, you'll see the various applications uh, for the Madeira door. Also, factory installed glazing. Um, it's, it's not um, used as often, but just keep it in mind that Seco does um, offer doors um, and, uh, available with glazing in there and then also pre-finished. Um, years ago, it used to be if you wanted a pre-finished frame, it had to be KD. Um, now, frames can come out welded or KD, uh, shipped to the job site with a factory pre finish or custom color to it, and they can be welded. So again, this is another option that is available. Just quickly, I'm going to review uh, specialty products and we do have an actual presentation, but these are the types of openings that we consider as specialty um, uh, products, your bullet, your blast, RF shielded types of openings, your acoustical, uh, stainless, forced entry, bullet resistant products, which are um, um, for your, um, uh, types of openings where you want to uh, like a, um, oh gosh, I'm just, my mind just left me there for a second. But on the forced entry, um, those are the types of products where they're high security. I apologize, high security. Um, attack resistant, flood resistant, lead line, water resistant types of products that we have. Um, and then the other type, um, and, and again, this is under the door group. Um, so I wanted just to briefly uh, make you aware of it. If you're not, we have the right door and the right slide, which was just introduced into the market back in March. Um, your right door is an integrated system. Your door, your frame, your hardware. The look of this is really beautiful because of the fact that the exit device is inset into the door itself. You have different types of finishes, different types of doors that you can have for the integrated or right door system. Again, as it says there, the benefits of it being aesthetic, um, aesthetically pleasing. You've got a lot of different designer options to this, a lot of different types of hardware, and you have the pre-assembled hardware devices um, that are available. And applications here, you'll see elevator lobby. A lot of times you'll see that in that elevator lobby where if there's a fire, that door can close, preventing people trying to get into the elevator lobby and into the elevator. And then the right slide, again, we see more and more of these sliding doors um, in construction, whether you know a, a standard swing door takes up a lot of real estate. So you have these slide doors. And like I said, the right slide just came out, was introduced into the market in March. We have it where it's non-acoustic, um, or you can have it with an STC rating of a 34. So again, we've got a lot of different options to that, different hardware. Be aware of that. You can always go to our website, rightdoor.com to get rightslide.door.com to get more information. And lastly, you'll see we have a lot of different industry organization. This slide is just as a reminder to you, a lot of the um, organizations we have out there that you can use as a resource. I think the biggest one is the SDI um, when it comes to doors and frames, Still Door Institute. This is a resource that you know, guides us, it has the guidelines for 
um, the types of standards of the, the standards of our doors, the different types of reinforcement. It has in there um, a lot of videos on how to install a steel door, um, how to uh, install a frame, whether it's a masonry frame, drywall frame uh, for an existing opening. So take advantage of going to SDI um, website and, and taking a look at all of the resources that are available to you on there. And again, your DHI, NFPA 80, IBC, and of course, BHMA. So with that, we are a few minutes early um, with this um, presentation. So I wanted to check with Katie if there were any questions on um, any of the slides. Not at this point, but if anybody does have any questions, now would be your time at the bottom of your screen. You should see a Q&A icon. Feel free to type your question in there. We'll wait a few minutes. And if there are no questions, really appreciate you being here today. Okay. Um, if we don't have any more questions, if you think of something as you're going through this, or like Katie said at the beginning of this, this is recorded. Um, so this will be able to, uh, you'll be able to view this um, and we'll send you information tomorrow. As you're reviewing this, if you have questions, please reach out to me um, and um, we will try to answer your questions or your local DSS um, or your business development person are great resources for SECO products, any kind of um, technical questions you may have or just about the product itself in general. So please reach out to any one of us I will be more than happy to help you. And with that, if there are no other questions, I wanna say everyone, thank you so much for attending and be safe out there and we will see you later. Bye-bye.